Yeah, first of all, um, sorry for being late. Um, I, I, I know you shifted my speech a bit to the, to the back. Um, as usual, I had a short notice appointment and my chief legal officer is over, so, um, well, um, I'm sorry, so I finally made it. Um, you might wonder why a person from BlackBerry is talking about uh, entrepreneurship and startup uh, company, um, which is not really a startup anymore. <laughs> Um, and especially a company which was in the news over the recent months and nearly years about being out of the business, declining a market share, uh, irrelevant, um, reducing headcount massively, being in trouble. Um, one thing I hear every time I meet a person, oh yeah, you're still there. That's interesting. Um, so, but I think what I can tell you is um, BlackBerry is a classical startup, or started as a classical startup. Um, we grew to a real market leader globally. Um, we had part times where we were monopoly, had a monopoly in the world, more or less, on mobile data. And we successfully managed to become a niche player. So um, we had a big development over the recent years, and uh, everybody saw, well, there's Samsung and there's Apple dominating the market, and what the hell is BlackBerry? Um, well, I have my BlackBerry here to see my slides because I don't want to have a look always uh, up there. So, um, may I get started about what is BlackBerry all about? So, it's a true Canadian story. So, there's a small town okay, medium-sized town, Waterloo, uh, near Toronto. The one or the other may have heard about that town. Um, by the way, a very nice Oktoberfest and a lot of German-speaking people. Every time I'm there, um, I'm forced to speak German. The problem is always I don't understand what the people want to tell me. Um, so, but, but what's it all about? So we had a founder called Mike Lazaridis, a maybe well-known person in, in Canada. Um, he founded the company in 84, so we are not that new anymore. So it's, oh, we should celebrate, we, we should have celebrated this year. Uh, we didn't do. Um, so Mike at that time was a student at Waterloo University. So he studied engineering, surprise. Um, so he was an engineer and is still an engineer, so it's still interesting to meet him. He's still around and doing things in Canada, even if he's not uh, part of BlackBerry anymore. Um, he f founded this company as a very, very small one. He didn't graduate yet, and there was an opportunity to work with General Motors and build up their network. So we came from a very different angle. Um, and yeah, uh, with this small contract, um, he developed at the end of the day a solution which became well-known in the world and became the first real smartphone ever, even if people like to tell me that there's a difference between a BlackBerry and a smartphone. Um, well, if you define a touchscreen device as a smartphone, then it's a, there might be a difference. Um, but we really invented the smartphone. And today, still, it's maybe one of the most known Canadian brands in the world. Even, I'm dealing with 35 countries around the world, um, in the mo majority of the countries, I have to explain that we are Canadian and we are not U.S. American. Um, yeah, and finally, and that's maybe the interesting part of, your, uh, of, of the speech, is uh, we came into trouble. Um, we saw that over the recent months that there are a couple of uh, technology com companies who are not there anymore. Um, I, I think about something like Nokia. Um, but... Um, we're still there, and I want to tell you the story um, about BlackBerry. So, maybe some facts you might not know. Um, BlackBerry, as a company, we were named Research in Motion in the past, and I really regret that we are not named Research in Motion anymore, because it was so good when you're on an event, you could always be uh, undercover somehow, because people will ask you, okay, uh, what's Research in Motion? And I always said, well, well, it's a small Canadian startup. Um, but we started with, with working in the film industry, for example. So Mike Lazaridis, as a person, uh, won an Oscar and an Emmy Award. 
that's uh, quite a long time ago, but um, so there's a big shift from being a company supplying uh, the, the film business to a smartphone company today. Um, another nice fact I really like is that the first BlackBerry was launched in Germany. We launched the first BlackBerry in 99 in Munich. Um, well, it, it looks a bit different than smartphones do today, but in fact, it doesn't look that much different to the newest BlackBerry. So, um, uh, another interesting fact for me is how companies can develop. So we have been a real startup, and in 2009, um, by the Fortune magazine, we were named the fastest growing company in the world. Um, at that time, we had about 22,000 employees uh, being active in 150 markets around the world. Um, that was a good time. That was a real good time. Um, so we were at the top of our career, let's say, as a company. Our market share was huge. Our stock prices were, I think, best time, $135. Today we are at around $12, so a big difference. People lost a lot of money, but before people won a lot of money. Um, but some, some additional facts. I mean, uh, why BlackBerry is still there? Um, that's, that's one thing we partly discussed with the uh, US government, for example. They always refer to the fact that at 9-11 in New York, the BlackBerry network was the only one still operating. So a lot of the emergency services um, use the Blackberries of the bankers and so on to communicate. That was a reason at that time that we used a different standard of communication technology than others, but it's, it's a fact which is still there, especially in the US. Um, another fact which I really like is um, people underestimate us. So, um, yes, we have a small market share, but if you go to countries like Indonesia or Nigeria, the Blackberry is the must-have. It's not an Apple, it's not a Samsung. You're really good if you have a BlackBerry. And especially in Nigeria, for example, their whole businesses um, organized through a BlackBerry. But the, I'm, I'm, I'm doing government relations, so I'm, I'm coming to my point, my two points. Um, to, even today, 16 out of the 20 G20 countries, so when they met, I think, last week in Australia, there were a lot of Blackberries. So 16 out of 20 uh, G20 countries use Blackberry in government as a secure solution. And even since two years, the German government approved Blackberry with additional security solutions by our partner Secosmart as the one to have. And even the German chancellor today uses a Blackberry. But this, this all doesn't tell you anything about uh, yeah, a startup. So I would like to tell you the story we, where we came from. So the rise and the fall of BlackBerry. And we succeeded um, within 10 years to grow from releasing the first BlackBerry in 99 to becoming the fastest growing company in the world with 22,000 employees and in operating in more than 150 countries. So it took us 10 years only to become really big and really successful. Uh, the bad part of it is um, it took us only five years to uh, get back on the ground. And there we are today with around 7,000 employees globally. So that's a massive change. Um, and yeah, with a market share which is uh, in the most stats not visible anymore. So if you have this polls in politics, there's always the others. So we are usually in the part of the others. Um, nevertheless, BlackBerry is still the number one supplier for restricted industries and governments around the world. So the question I want to ask is, is that really a bad development? I mean, it looks bad. Honestly speaking, it's uh, 22,000 to 7,000 people. Stock price from $135 to $12. That looks really bad. But um, I would say it's about, 
or it's less about being just successful to be a startup. It's about to survive even bad times. And there are other ex uh, examples on the market. Today, everybody talks about Apple, how successful they are. Just think about, I think, 10 years back, they were nearly bankrupt, and uh, Steve Jobs had to borrow money from Microsoft to pay the, the bills. So I don't know how many years it is. Um, so what did we do? Um, there were a time, it was a time where we were not just BlackBerry, we were called the Crackberry. So people were addicted to that. If you are a manager, you have to have a BlackBerry and you survive without it. Um, in fact, we made work mobile. So people were able to travel and have access to their emails, contacts, uh, meeting calendar, and so on. So we really changed the way of people uh, operate today. Um, the point I want to mention with that is um, Mike Lazaridis at that time had an idea. He was thinking, and everybody laughed about him, by the way, he was thinking that making email mobile can be a game changer in the world. That was in 95, 96. At that time, we produced pagers. Can anybody remember pagers? Where are you? Huh? Um, but making email mobile enables you to work wherever you are. And I, I, from my personal life, that, that changes a lot for me. So I'm traveling through the majority of the European countries and Africa and Middle East. So wherever I am, I'm able to work with that device. Um, and the other point, and I really want to mention it, over years, BlackBerry became big, but stayed a startup. So that's one of the big things you have to have in mind. Um, we grew over 10 years to a real global leader. But in fact, the way we operated was still looking like a startup. Um, this hasn't to be bad, but at the end of the day, it causes the trouble. So the question is, what went wrong? First of all, we had a massive of growth. We had years where we grew, about, uh, grew by 300% a year. Not just uh, employee numbers, but also sales numbers, revenue, profit. Um, and we had a market leadership. And the company wasn't prepared for that. We didn't have a long-standing history on knowing how to operate in more than 150 countries, managing a, a group of uh, 22,000 uh, employees. The, the leadership of the country, uh, company were there since the early beginning. So they were managing 100 people, then 1,000 people, 10,000 people, 20,000 people. They didn't, they didn't have the experience for that. And, uh, we had a belief at that time. We, we believe that smartphones are working devices. So they are made to mobilize people's work life. Uh, we didn't think about sexy devices. So if you look back a couple of years and see the Blackberries, the old ones, they're, they're good. They're really good, but they're not nice. There's a big difference. And I still meet people who carry six or seven year old Blackberries and say, I love it, but I would like to have a new one, but I have a policy in the company that I just get a new one when the old one is broken. So what can I do? I threw it on the floor, I uh, drove with my truck over it, it's still working. So I say, okay, there's one thing you can do, it's uh, water. Um, but uh, the problem is you're producing very good products, they're not nice. But at the end of the day, people think, well, uh, maybe it's not something I want to be seen with. Um, and we had a time where we said a very interesting thing. Um, I can remember Mike Lazaridis saying that, saying, well, I doubt that people want to swipe with their finger on windows, on, on touch screens, so they want to have a kind of keyboard. Well, today we know that this estimation was wrong. 
So why, why did we lose market share? Because we didn't have a good touchscreen device. Um, another thing, and that's obvious, the same wrong estimation is who needs app? Who needs an app? You need an app for email, okay, good. Calendar app, okay, we can give you that. Um, but who needs, I don't know, a Facebook application or an application which allows you to um, act like you're drinking a beer? Nobody does. We always thought if you enable people to use the internet, mobile, nobody needs an app. Well, I'm standing here saying, okay, that was the wrong estimation too. So two big mistakes in the market. Um, and then there came the point where we went from a monopoly that we had to a duopo duopoly where we are not part of. So within five years, it changed from being BlackBerry, the global leader in smartphones, to the world is led by Apple and Samsung. And nobody talks about BlackBerry or Sony or LG or um, anything else. And last but not least, it's all about technology. So what I want to say is, um, if you're successful, everything is good. Everybody loves you. Nobody is saying you're bad. But if things run, go wrong, then you come to the point where you say, the real challenge of a startup is to survive. And it's, if you are able to do the turnaround, then you show that um, you're a real company and you became a grown-up company. I have that here, sorry. I always forget to click. So very fast, I, I, I saw the red card already. Um, let, let, let me talk about the turnaround business. So what makes me believe that BlackBerry will stay? There's some simple points um, why BlackBerry, I think BlackBerry is the biggest comeback of the year. Um, we refocus the business. Um, we are made to stay. Um, we, we thought about, okay, what, what, is the, what is the key we can have? So do we really want to fight Apple and Samsung? No, we can't. We're a small Canadian company at the end of the day. So we found our niche, and our niche is security, enterprise mobility, and for the future, IoT. So Internet of Things, people might have heard about that. Um, the second thing is restructure. Um, of course, it looks bad if you see from 22,000 to 7,000 employees and cuts are hard and nobody wants to do that. Um, but it showed us that we had to refocus our workforce globally um, and that we have to reduce headcounts and make it more efficient. And surprisingly for us, today we are more efficient to, to work and we're still working in 150 countries in the world. Um, last but not least, more or less, it's a reinvention. So as a market leader, you think you had the one invention, the, the, the one innovative, uh, innovative uh, idea um, that changed the world. So, but, and afterwards, you're not really innovative anymore. So what we had to do is going back and say, okay, what's, what's innovation? What can we do? Is it just this year? I mean, that's looking weird and it's a square device and nobody saw that uh, in the world up to now. Um, but the question is, is it only about BlackBerry today? No. Um, we're dealing as a global multi-platform player. It's hard to explain, so we're supporting every device out there. doesn't matter which operating system. So it's, it's really finding your key strengths and reinvent your company. Um, and really, finally, stop being a startup. Um, create structures which serve a global company, which uh, gives you the strengths to manage a big team. Um, yep, th th that's more or less. And I want to say that, just leaving it with that, um, Blackberry is here to stay. Um, we had made the experience to grow from a startup to a global market leader and going back 
Now, not being a startup, but a small player. So I think that makes a difference. It's your decision as a startup what you want to do. Are you here to stay? Are you developing a company and a solution to stay? Or are you creating an idea um, to sell your company one day? That's my final word. Thank you. Thank you for your openness and to, to share your story with us. We will have more time later I'm uh, sorry. when we have I'm our first wrong. round. No, it's okay. It's, it's the Canadian Embassy. You are <laughs> Blackberry. I love that. So here we go. We, I will take questions. Yes. Thank you for your, uh, yeah, my name is Thomas and I'm working also as a journalist uh, in mobile stuff here in Berlin for an online magazine and I tested your products, for example, Q10 and uh, Z10 and both are really nice products, but for me, they are just me too products like Apple iPhones or like Samsung or like Sony products. I would like to know, you, you uh, told us in uh, the last, on the last pages, that you're reinventing your business, uh, that you would like to innovate new products. You, we showed a little bit about security. Uh, so tell me, what are you doing really disruptive now to be innovative again, uh, to serve the hockey mm -hmm. stick again, and to be successful, not only in Canada, and not only in markets like Indonesia or India, or in um, markets like Spain or the Netherlands in Europe? Um, first of all, I disagree that we are only successful there. Um, have a look, and uh, I know a couple of lawyers are in here, um, which is the preferred device of lawyers still in the world. Go to every country you want, or to banking sector, or to government. So it's, it's, not, it's not about, you know, it's always two sides of the coin, you know. Um, there's one side which says, uh, your market share, and it's the, the other side where you say, okay, where, where do I make money? And that's, that's the key, key question. Where can I generate money? So what about reinvention? Um, there are also two things. One thing is, it's not about just about the devices anymore. So yeah, we are still producing devices, and maybe you have seen the BlackBerry Passport. Everybody want, who wants to say that's a Me Too product, I fully disagree and I'm happy to show the passport later on and so it's a very weird product but it's great. Um, the other thing is about reinvention, saying um, we bring our core strengths to other platforms. We just announced a, a, a partnership with, uh, with Samsung for example. So we're enabling Samsung to deliver secure devices to enterprises and governments or we are working together with Apple, Samsung, and Microsoft to make mobile device management in companies. We are going to uh, do things in the uh, Internet of Things. Um, just very few quotes. I don't know if you know that 80% of all cars in that world are using the same operating system as we use. It's a small company called QNX based in Ottawa. Um, we acquired a couple of years ago. It's a fundament of nearly all cars, uh, electronic system. Um, same with, I don't know, power plants and uh, medical services. So we're already there. So what we do innovative is connecting these solutions we have there, our security solutions, our mobile solutions, our global network, and really building offers for customers in these fields to manage their whatever device in the world if it's a mobile phone, if it's a smartphone, if it's a machine, if it's a car, if it's a train, I don't know, whatever, um, that's innovation. It's, it's not just thinking we're still just a smartphone company. It's thinking about, okay, what can we do out of our assets? And you will see a lot of new things to come over the next year. Thank you. And sorry to, for, to Toronto for walking into the picture. Um, I have one other question. <laughs> uh, no, no, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Jeff Jarakis from uh, Rolls-Royce. Uh, one question, uh, Dirk. Where did uh, Mike Lazaridis get his seed money from? Sorry. When, for example, Bill Gates built oh, okay. up his Microsoft empire, the seed money was his family. Yeah. Yeah, they were quite rich. No, uh, a Mike Apple, wasn't that. Apple was a group of friends that clustered together. Where did Mike uh, Lazaridis get his seed money from? It was a very small development. So the first money he got was from a contract with General Motors to build um, or to operate their, their uh, IT infrastructure. That was the basis to create or found the company. And from that day on, they, with smaller contracts getting bigger, the Canadian government was a very early partner. Um, we grew the, uh, the company step by step. And the final big step was, of course, um, going to the stock market and finding investors who believed in that idea. So today we are a public trade company, um, and of course a lot of money came from the stock market. Okay, one last question and then we go into the coffee break. Yeah. Sorry for, for stopping you from drinking coffee. I don't want to out myself with a question which is maybe stupid, but I've never heard before the expression the Internet of Things. Oh, okay. Can you talk on that for uh, one or two sentences? There, there are different definitions. It's the Internet of Things, Internet of Everything, whatever. It means that uh, it's, it's not really defined yet. So a lot of people use that as a buzzword. Um, it means that whatever you have, whatever kind of device, if it's a computer, if it's a smartphone, if it's your fridge, if it's the the steel mill or your car or your train or a medical device, whatever, is connected to the internet. Thinking about that, that causes a lot of problems. First of all, I have to manage that. Second of all, I have to secure it. Um, talk to a hacker today, he will tell you, it's so good, I can, I can uh, search the internet and find, I don't know, a gas power plant which is not protected and have an internet access, so I can access that easily. So it's about these all these small devices you wear, you have in your household, you have at work, whatever, are connected to the internet. That's the internet of things. Thank you. And there's nothing like a stu uh, there no. Are no stupid questions. <laughs> uh, 